presented in uh, Philip Corso's book. I think it's what Roswell revisited. Uh, good question. How the uh, I gave a whole talk on uh, Phil Corso's book and, and Phil Corso at uh, at one time, and um, my recollection of what I said and what I think now is that when Phil Corso states specifically that he did something, he's probably accurately stating that. When he states that someone else did something, like we reverse engineered this, but he never saw it, then I'd say he might be susceptible to exaggeration and or speculation. I don't know, it's possible that John Alexander may comment on that, on that point. But I, I think when he stated something that he did it himself, I think he was an honest man, and I think he was stating it, uh, what, he, what he did. Whether what he stated about other people is more questionable. Okay, we have just one more question. I'm sorry. Um, this may be a technical question on the Bowen document, but I'm a bit puzzled why, um, for a document that apparently was preserved pretty high up in the Air Force hierarchy, ends up being released by the Fort Meade FOIA office. Uh, that doesn't make much sense to me. Well, I'm, I'm agreed with that question, too. If you want me to speculate on the answer uh, briefly, this document was clearly given to the Air Force for evaluation and, and was evaluated at the classified level, but there was nothing there. There was nothing important, and so they stuck it in a file. And here it is in a top secret file. Well, it's not easy to declassify it, and I think, frankly, the guys who were in charge of, of the, that particular file didn't know what to do with it. Uh, but they did follow the subject enough, said, well, he knew this guy, Tim Cooper, was receiving leaked documents, let's mail it to him. And so I think it was as simple as that. They stuck it in the envelope, there was no transmittal letter, they got it out of their files, they didn't have to account for it. Okay, uh, Brenda? One, I'm sorry, one last question. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I'm new to this, and so I'm looking at it from a uh, perspective of, of trying to, uh, really the previous speaker talked about uh, believing the observation and questioning the explanation. Yes. When I look at what you presented, I'd, I, it seems very credible to me that these are real documents and that these are real statements that were made. Uh, my impression is that, uh, my first impression is that, well, why couldn't this be evidence of a black ops operation in the government, which we know exists. We know that they go through a great deal of effort to uh, do a lot of black ops experimentation and development. And the explanation would be there for the relationship with JFK of someone, and especially when you mention funding, that's one of the greatest motivations for um, concern. Does that explanation